Alright, in this video we're going to go through how to add a title block via an XREF and then also create a dynamic editable block that you can update things like file, sheet number, etc. So first, I've already drawn out a title block and added some kind of fields, my logo, and some kind of basic information that I would want. So essentially what I would need to do is save this as a template and then make sure I have a different title block set up for each and every project because the intention behind using a title block as an XREF is that if you have a lot of different files and different drawings that are for the same project and for the same client then it might be easier actually to update it once within the title block uh, file and then have that XREF automatically update within your other DWGs but that obviously doesn't help when you need to make sure you have sheet numbers. So that's why we're combining this as an XREF with a block that is editable. So once this is all saved and ready to go, I need to make sure the corner of the page is actually set to the origin of the file. So what you wanna do is actually select everything and then use the move command. So M, enter, and then move from this corner of the page and instead of typing a number or trying to move it, we're just going to actually go into the command line and type 0, 0 and press enter. And essentially that's going to have moved it exactly where I needed it to be in the origin. So what I'm going to do is actually save this and then go into the file that I want to place my title block. So if this was a layout in a file that is you know, my plan drawing or something that needs the, the title block that I've just made for each and every project, essentially all I have to do is go to attach, choose the extra file, click open, and we can leave all of this there. And because it was set to the origin, it's actually placed it in exactly the location I need because we're at that zero zero. Now because it's an XREF it's grayed out but it will still print in full color. So at this point the only thing missing is the fact that we need some editable block that we can actually adjust things like the sheet number, the file, the revision number because that might change per, per sheet and an area for the notes. So to do this, we're actually going to be doing define attributes. But before we get into that, I am going to create a couple of layers for us to use for these particular attributes. And we want to make sure there are some textiles set up. So let's take a layer for a title block. And let's do another one for title block white. And I just want to make sure this one's going to print white. There. <laughs> so now I need to create a text style or two for my sheet number and some of these other kind of fields that I need to provide something to infill. So first I'm going to go into the annotate tab and click on this button here and we're going to create a new text style. So this is just going to be TB one and set the font that you want it to be and set the height so I want this one to be pretty big because it's going to be the the sheet size or the sheet number down at that bottom corner and apply and we also want a TB2 and this one's going to just be just a normal kind of font, but much shorter. And I think all that's fine. So close. So now we have our layers set up and our font styles. We can actually set up our attributes that are going to become this editable block. So if I go to the insert tab and I click on define attributes, this dialog box pops up and it's asking for a tag, a prompt, and a default and I'm going to uncheck multiple lines because I just want it to be tag, prompt, and default that I can enter. So essentially this is going to be a tag of sheet and the prompt is going to be sheet number. And then for the default 
just as your zero one. Now, I know I need this to be, let's say, right aligned, because I want it kind of aligned to this bottom corner. And I know it needs to be that really big style that I've just made in that TB1 text style. So, okay. And essentially, we can just place it in the sheet. Now, right now it's on layer zero, so I want to change it to that white layer. And also, I'm going to zoom in and move it just a little bit up. And a little bit over. So that's one part of our kind of editable block made. So now I'm going to add in some attributes for file and revision as well. This is going to be the same process, we just are going to change the text styles. And now the last attribute I want to create before making these into a block is up here with the notes. So I'm going to go to define attributes and this time I am going to make something that's going to be multiple lines and we'll see how that looks a little bit different in just a second. So tag notes prompt notes and then for the default because it's multiple lines I need to click on the three dots and now I can just click here and start typing my notes for a default note. And then, okay. Now let's keep it at that TB2 and I think everything else is fine. And then just click okay. And what we can do is then move it where it's not so tight into the corner. And there we go. So the one thing for multi-line text that we want to double check is that we want to make sure that it's not going to just run off the page and it actually is within the boundary of our title block. Now to do this, I first need to check the width of this part of the title block. So from there to there is two and a quarter inches. And essentially with that, what I can do is click on this, scroll down on the properties, and look for boundary width. Now if it says zero, that means it's actually not bound and it would just keep going if I never pressed enter. So to make it where it'll actually wrap the text, I'm gonna actually go in boundary width and set it at two inches. And with that, we're ready to make this into a block. So I'm selecting my notes, I'm selecting my file, revision, and sheet attribute. And I'm going to type B for block and press enter. So I'm going to give it a name. So, And then I want to make sure I pick a point for it to actually be um, kind of its base point. So click here. And I am actually going to click on this bottom corner. And because I think that's going to work the best for how I use the block. And let's just press OK. And suddenly these editable attributes are suddenly editable and we can actually make some adjustments. So I'm going to just leave that with OK. And if I look, all of my placeholders have now been added. And this is now a block that I can move around. Now let's see how this is helpful. If we go to another layout, to first we want to make sure there's a title block added. So attach title block and it's there and now in order to make sure there's a sheet added we just go to insert TB fields and there's our editable title block block so essentially say maybe everything else remains the same but it's going to be sheet number two and there it's editable and if we wanted to change it again maybe instead of 002 it's a2, we can. And going back to the original, double click, and A1. So that's the procedure for using a title block as an XREF and then creating a block that you can then edit 
on the on top of that for these more customizable fields. So obviously this might be a little time consuming for some people and it might not work the best, which is why sometimes I recommend actually using a block as a title block and then actually making every little bit editable and then copying and pasting as you need it. Uh, and that's what my title blocks in my store are set up like.